city of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to his mother. The first joyful the Annunciation. Today is another feast honoring not only Jesus but the Blessed Mother. That is why you notice that the color that I am using, the color of the vestment is the color of the Blessed Mother. My dear friends, we will interrupt our commemoration of the Lenten season for a while and we will reflect about the beautiful story of the Annunciation. Let us try to be more positive this time. I will not mention anything about COVID, about the pandemic, because I'm sure many of us are already tired of the same topic. Today is the solemnity of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to the Blessed Virgin Mary. One of the busiest persons during the Christmas season, incidentally, Today is March 25, exactly nine months from today is Christmas. Pasko na naman. Mga kapatid, what exactly happened when the angel visited the Blessed Mother on the day of the Annunciation? Let us try to reconstruct the story. There is an angel. The name is Gabriel. The busiest angel among the angels during the Christmas season. There is Mary, a young maiden. There is no other person who witnessed the Annunciation. No one else heard the long conversation between the angel and the Blessed Mother. I'd like to ask you a question. Have you seen an angel? How does an angel look like? What are the qualifications for one to become an angel? I remember one of our lecturers during our renewal course in NEMI who cracked a joke that made all of us in the class laugh. He was talking about the qualities of an angel. Again, this was narrated in the context of Number one, listen. What are the characteristics of an angel? You might want to apply, Semilu. Number one, an angel must be male. And then somebody said, oh, I thought they have no gender. An angel must be male. Look at the names. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Jujel, Shalchil. The names are all male. Second qualification. An angel must be young. Have you seen an angel that looks old? An old angel will be a contradiction in terms. An angel is a messenger of God. If an angel is old, he will find it difficult to fly. He cannot fly anymore. He cannot go very far because he is already old. The wings are already tired. That is the second qualification according to our teacher, Job. Third, an angel must be good-looking like yours truly <laughs> my dear brothers and sisters can you find an angel who is ugly if an angel is not good looking the one who will receive an angel an angel is a divine visitor if he is not good looking the person who is being visited might collapse and might lo lose her consciousness in any case what happened an angel knows something that nobody else knows when an angel appears he calls the name of the recipient of the special message like 
Joseph. Joseph. You must say it nicely. Not Joseph! Joseph! No! An angel must not be excitable. Joseph. Gentle. Joseph. Zechariah. Zechariah. Mary. Mary. And then the angel, after calling the name, will leave a divine assurance. What is the divine assurance? Do not be afraid. Zechariah was afraid even when the angel told him, Your prayer has been heard. But the Blessed Mother is not afraid. The Blessed Mother simply said, Fiat mihi, I am the handmaid of the Lord. My dear friends, an angel is a divine visitor. An angel comes from, for a singularly unique divine purpose and encounter. Gabriel told Mary gently in Greek, Kaire, ke karitomene. Kaire, ke karitomene. How do you translate that into English? Hail, full of grace in Filipino, napupuno ka ng gracia. Mary is full of grace. Mary enjoys the favor of God. Mary is gracia plena that connotes beauty, that connotes comeliness, that means elegance or generosity or goodness of character. In other words, Mary represents the beauty of a person touched by God for one's life and service to the people of God. Mary has found favor with God. Mary has been chosen for a very special mission. The angel Gabriel assured her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And then the angel proceeded to explain how all this would take place. The angel mentioned to Mary, Mary was listening intently, you will conceive and bear a son. The promise of a child to a young virgin who has no sexual relations with any man is an even greater miracle than the birth of a child to an elderly couple like Zechariah and Elizabeth. And then the angel continues the lecture and Mary listens to the lecture, to the conference of the angel. And Mary said, and Mary the angel said to Mary, Your son will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Call him Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, the centerpiece of the Annunciation is the description of the status, the identity, and the future role of the child about to be conceived in the womb of the Blessed Mother. This child will be great. He will be called Son of the Most High. He will inherit the throne of his father David. And then, the Blessed Mother gave a second reaction. Mr. Angel! Mr. Angel! Mary said, How can this be? I have no knowledge of any man. And then the long conversation between Mary and the angel continues. Mary is overwhelmed. Mary is troubled and wondered what it would mean. You mean I am going to give birth to a son without ceasing to be a virgin? And Mary asked how the conception would happen as distinct from Zechariah's doubting question. How am I about to know? Which is almost demanding for an evidence. And the angel responded to the question of Mary that the Holy Spirit will come upon her. Ha? Huh? Holy Spirit? But who is the Holy Spirit? And then the angel gave a conference about the Holy Spirit. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Blah, 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 blah. The angel gives her a clue. Mary's cousin Elizabeth 
known to be childless, has conceived in her old age and was in her sixth month because nothing is impossible with God. And to make the long story short, Mary's response is verbalized. Mary's response is articulated. The answer of Mary fits the spirituality of the Anawim, the servant of Yahweh. And she said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. My dear friends, the purpose of Mary's pregnancy, it is a divine pregnancy, is to point to the divinity of the child. The birth of Jesus is the idea of God. It is not Mary's choice. It is the idea of God. Mary did not choose to become the mother of God. And Mary gives her consent. God the Father in heaven wipes off his sweat and said, Finally, my son would have a mother. My dear friends, the presence of God is to be brought into the world through the womb of a woman. At this point, may I invite all of you to look at the tabernacle behind me. Look at the tabernacle in the sanctuary. Most tabernacles are either made of steel or gold or silver. The tabernacle is like a mother's womb. The tabernacle is like a mother's womb. And usually, the tabernacle has a key to protect the sacred hosts inside it. Mary is the key. Mary is the key. And Saint Luke believes that if half the world is made up of women, half the world is made up of sons of women. My dear friends, the first Christmas would not have been possible if Mary did not say yes, fiat mihi. Amen.